What's up, basketball fans? This is Coach Jay. Today we're going to break down how to teach and implement the Villanova 4-out-1 in motion. This is a great offense to run if you have a team that can really shoot the ball. If you have a team that can shoot it from the perimeter, this is a great offense for you to run at the high school and sometimes even the middle school level, depending on, on the talent level that you have. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over um, some basic actions that you can run out of it, as well as uh, some really good uh, part method breakdown drills that allow you to squeeze every last detail out of this offense. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's begin with the basic spacing and alignment of the offense. Um, as I teach it, we start out in what I call high and wide spacing. High and wide spacing uh, is, a, is a form of four out one in spacing where the slots line up about three feet beyond the three-point line, the wings sprint to the dead corner parallel with the block, and the postman runs, runs rim to rim um, and, and ducks in a, right above the block at the first hash mark. This allows he or she to pivot in either direction. We want all five players on the floor to maintain 18-foot spacing. In most motion offenses, we want 15 to 18-foot spacing. Um, with this offense, uh, in order to create proper driving lanes and cutting la lanes, uh, we want 18-foot spacing. Now let's go over the basic automatics within the offense. Uh, the first rule within the four out one in motion is that anytime you make a slot to wing pass, in this case it's a pass from one to two, uh, the, the passer makes a logo cut to, to the weak side. Um, to clarify, a logo cut uh, is a shallow cut away from the defense across the, across the middle of the lane. We, we, in this offense, we don't want to cut too deep. If we cut too deep into the lane, um, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to clog the middle up and not allow uh, five room to operate. Um, another little detail that I put um, into the offense is anytime the ball is passed to the wing, um, we want five to immediately sit, in, sit low in a stance and seal his or her defender in the lane. To create what I call a sweet catch. A sweet catch refers to uh, uh, the postman being numbers to number with uh, with the feeder. In this case, two. If a sweet catch presents itself, you always throw the ball inside. Now, anytime the ball does go into the post, we want uh, the the uh, perimeter player who inserted the ball to set to set a screen for their for their teammate. In this case, we're going to say that two inserted the ball to five, and he or she sets a flare screen for one. Um, we want both players to read the defense and react accordingly. In this case, we're going to say that one's defender got screened, one uh, straight cuts into the open spot, two slips to the rim. Five can hit either player depending on what on what the defense does. Now, anytime a split cut occurs, we want three and four, or uh, we want the weak side uh, slot and wing to execute some sort of an interchange. Uh, what this does is it, it uh, prevents three and four's defender from helping inside on five. And if they do, it's going to screw up their rotations when they try to rotate back off the pass. The third automatic in the four out one in motion is on a slot to slot pass, an interchange must occur. In this case, one passes to four, then sprints to the uh, same side wing, and two replaces one in the weak side and weak side slot. Another minor detail that I put in on the uh, slot to slot pass is on a slot to slot pass, we want five uh, to flash to the opposite block. Uh, when five flashes, we want he or she to be looking for the high low pass from four. Um, uh, when Villanova went to the national championship game. The first time with um, Ochefu and Jenkins at the four and the five, uh, this was a common uh, automatic that they would run out of the offense. Um, oftentimes, Jenkins would be the high man ready to shoot the three. The defense would extend, 
and he and uh, Jenkins would shove it inside to Ochefu, um, who would get an easy shot with no double team. All right, now we're going to go over some of our uh, quick hitting actions that we run um, out of our secondary break off of uh, missed shots and forced turnovers. If we get a steal or a defensive rebound, we want to push the ball and get the ball up the floor in three seconds or less uh, so that we can get a quick shot, uh, so that we can get an easy basket. Um, the first action we're going to go over is called drag. Um, dra a drag uh, occurs when... Uh, the defense stops the ball uh, half court line and in. In this case, we're going to see that one or X one stops the ball stops the ball just beyond the three point line. We want four or uh, the trailer to sprint into a drag screen. Uh, we want uh, this to be a hard screen. Um, and and uh, following the drag screen, we want one to immediately attack downhill uh, to set his man up with the crossover or the change of direction dribble. Um, and get get downhill and look to score first and then create second. Um, anytime a drag occurs, uh, we want the tr the screener, uh, the drag screener, uh, to roll and replace with the post. Um, again, just like with all all actions in motion offense of any kind, we want uh, both four and five to be looking to score first on this on this on this action. So we want four to roll hard to the rim, looking for. Looking for the lob, looking for the bounce pass from one, and we want five uh, to uh, pop out hard, looking for an open three or a potential high low with four. Um, it's critical that in ev every action you run in motion offense, that everybody is actively looking to score. Um, if you if you have an aggressive mindset and you're act actively attacking. Um, Odds are you're gonna you're gonna execute with more precision, and um, you know if you're moving with a purpose, um, you're gonna get high percentage shots. And especially in this motion offense, where there's a lot of player movement, a lot of ball movement, um, if you're if you're moving with a purpose and you're cutting hard, you're screening hard, you're looking to score, um, you're gonna get open shots even if you weren't looking for it. The second action that we run out of our sideline break um, is called flat. Um, a flat occurs when the um, defense stops the ball uh, beyond the half court line or uh, far away from the basket. Um, uh, if if that happens, we want the uh, postman to set a step up or flat ball screen uh, for one. Uh, the definition of a uh, flat ball screen or a step up screen, uh, depending on what your terminology is. Um, is a ball screen where the postman, um, where the postman's back is uh, to the uh, baseline, to towards the basket. Um, this uh, really allows one to get downhill without really setting his his or her man up with the uh, change of direction dribble. Um, anytime the postman sets a ball screen, uh, we want the uh, uh, strong side man, whether it's a wing or a slot, depending on where the uh, defense, uh, depending on where the ball screen occurs. We want them to fill behind uh, the ball, uh, the driver. Um, we want them to fill somewhat in like a circular motion. Um, in this case, we have uh, two uh, filling behind one, uh, replacing him, hit he or she in the slot. Um, off of the ball screen, we want five to roll hard to the rim. Um, uh, look, looking for the looking for a bounce pass from one if the defense takes away the drive. Um, anytime a uh, we all we always want to have some sort of weak side action um, in this offense. Uh, this makes the makes ever makes the ball screens even harder to guard. Um, in this case, we have uh, three and four executing an interchange on the weak side. Um, uh, the reason we do this is it uh, it occupies their defenders and prevents them from helping or doubling down. Um, on uh, one or five, depend, uh, whichever one gets to the rim first. Um, and if they do double down, um, uh, because there's because their man is moving, uh, it it uh, uh, screws up the defensive rotations. Uh, when you know, if if let's say one kicks the ball back to three, uh, three's man's going to look to rotate, and he's going to be he's going to you know lose his man in the shuffle. He's going to He's going to be rotating to the corner when he needs to be rotating to the slot. 
uh, makes this makes this offense very difficult to guard. Uh, the uh, the common element uh, that we run out of our sideline break is if the initial action breaks down, whether it's flat or drag, uh, we uh, we don't try to we don't we don't try to play one on one. If the initial action breaks down, uh, we are in motion. Uh, we're in our basic motion offense. We're in our three basic rules. We just work the ball until we get the shot we want. It's critical that um, when you're teaching this offense and you're teaching uh, players. Um, how to re read and react. Um, it's critical that you teach them what what to look for when the defense breaks down, so that they don't try to play one on one instead of going to motion. All right, now we're going to go into some of our uh, half court sets. Um, uh, these uh, next three actions that we're going to go into are uh, the sets that we run off of made shots. Uh, we still want to get the ball up the floor in about three seconds or less. The difference is these actions are uh, more time consuming. There's a lot of movement in them. Um, and you're looking to get a high percentage shot within the half court offense. Uh, we still, still, we never want to uh, just walk the ball up the floor. Um, in my opinion, that really uh, gets, uh, really plays into the defense hands. It lets them get set, it lets them communicate. Uh, we still want to push the ball up the floor so, so that we can. Uh, Kind of le so it leads to fatigue on the defense. Um, first action we're going to go into is called spread. Um, uh, we always want movement before the initial action when we're uh, trying to score off of made shots. So in this case, one uh, passes the ball to two, slot to wing, uh, follows the uh, slot to wing rule and logo cuts away. Uh, five as uh, sealing his or her defender looking for a sweet catch. If the sweet catch isn't there, we reverse the ball. Um, and remember, off of a slot-to-slot -slot pass, it's all, there's always an interchange. Um, and then from there, uh, the, the uh, five-man, the post, uh, 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 sprints hard at three and, set, and sets a spread ball screen. Now, the spread ball screen to the naked eye looks very similar to... Um, a flat ball screen, but it's uh, it's very different. Uh, the uh, the spread ball screen occurs with the uh, postman's back to the sideline. So you know, you know, let's say your bench is over here on the uh, right side of the floor. Uh, think of it this way: we want fives back to be to the bench. Um, when th and we want three to attack downhill again. We want to score, F score first, pass second. Um, just like with flat, uh, when the post sets a ball screen, we want one to fill behind, and we want uh, two and four on the weak side to execute some sort of weak side action. We want them to interchange and occupy their defenders to screw up the defensive rotations. Uh, the next action we are going into is an action we call ace. Um, just like with spread, uh, we want movement before the action. Uh, we start out with a slot to wing pass. Uh, two is looking inside. Five is ceiling. Um, and then uh, if the sweet catch isn't there, uh, we reverse the basketball. Um, and then from there, um, instead of a spread ball screen at the slot, we pass the ball slot to wing again. Uh, once again, we want a logo cut, follow the rules. Um, and then once the ball is past the wing, we want the five man uh, to uh, sprint into a side ball screen for one. Again, both players in that action are looking to score. Five's ha rolling hard um, or popping back for an open three. One's driving downhill looking to score. Um, and just like any, just like with any post ball screen, uh, we want the uh, the near side man, the two man, to fill behind in a uh, sort of like in a circle. And uh, just like with spread, we want weak side action. We want uh, uh, three and four to execute an interchange to occupy their defenders um, and prevent them from helping down on one and five. The third action that we run um, out of our half court set is probably my favorite. It's called pinch. Um, just like with the first two actions, we uh, we want movement before uh, slot to wing pass, looking uh, looking inside. Um, sweet catch isn't there. We reverse it. Uh, this time we want five to uh, follow his or her pass, or follow follow the ball, and uh, look look for a high low inside. 
um, if the uh, um, if that if the high low isn't there um, and the uh, wing entry pass to one is denied. Uh, we want three uh, to insert the ball to five, who flashes to the high post, uh, looking for looking for the entry, and we want one who's being denied uh, to make a hard backdoor cut behind five. Five can hit uh, one with the bounce pass. Uh, this is a great pressure release action. Tex Winter calls this action "blind pig" out of the triangle, and um, countless uh, uh, college basketball coaches have run this. I've run some form of this action. Bill Self, Mike Shashevsky, Tony Bennett—they all run some form of blind pig as a as a uh, pressure release counter uh, to a denial defense. Um, if the back door isn't there, uh, we want five and three to execute some sort of a uh, two-man game. It can be a dribble handoff. It can be a back door cut. It can be a. Um, it can be you know sort of a post relocate. It can be a ball screen. Whatever. Uh, we want them to be working together. Um, if the uh, two-man game doesn't yield a shot, well, we want five to rip and go to the rim. Um, we, we want five to score first um, and, and uh, pass second, just like with any, any action in this offense. Uh, the rip and go is probably the best action we have in this offense to get to the free throw line. Um, and just like with every action in this offense, uh, we want there to be some sort of weak side action. Uh, uh, two and four execute an interchange. Um, uh, these th uh, three basic actions that we run out of the uh, four out one in motion um, are absolutely impossible to guard if you reverse the ball two or three times uh, before before you run the offense. If you reverse it once, uh, it's a little easier to guard. If you run it right out of the gate, uh, the D it's really easy to guard, but if you reverse the ball uh, three or four times before you run the offense, before you run your set, uh, the defense is almost always going to get lulled to sleep, um, and you're going to get a, you're either going to get a layup or an open three every single time. Um, as a coach, um, you can uh, specify how many ball reversals you want before you run the action. Um, it can vary from game to game. Um, you know, if you're playing against a team that you really want to speed up, you can set it for one to two ball reversals. Um, if you if you want to slow the game down, if you're playing against a team that's quick, a team that really wants to uh, run on you, um, you can set it up for uh, three or four ball reversals. Uh, the choice is yours. All right, now we're going to go into some uh, breakdown drills uh, for teaching this offense. Um, uh, the, just like with any offense that I run, I believe in a part whole method teaching approach. Um, I believe that that allows me to, um, uh, squeeze every last detail, um, out of the offense. Um, and it leads to better execution, uh, during games. Uh, the first act, uh, the first drill we're going to go over is the, uh, one on O basket cuts. Um, this drill teaches players how to cut hard in motion offense. Uh, if you saw my uh, five-out open post video, uh, we, we did a similar drill in that. Uh, it starts out with a coach in the wing um, and uh, a, on a cutter with the basketball um, in the slot. Um, we, want all, we want all players in line to have a basketball in their hands. Um, uh, one makes a uh, pass to the coach or the manager, whoever's in the sl whoever's in the wing. Then we want them to make a hard basket cut to the rim. Uh, when one, uh, the definition of a hard cut is we want one to push and lead off with their uh, near side foot, uh, whichever foot is closest to coach. We want them to push off their right foot um, when they uh, make the cut. This uh, make this uh, really allows them to pick up speed and uh, cut through contact. Uh, once you uh, get through that uh, cutting on that side of the floor, then you and then you uh, rotate to the other side. Uh, you rotate to the other side of the floor where uh, you run the same thing over and over again. Uh, this drill, I would say, takes about five minutes in practice. Once your players uh, master the basic footwork and techniques in the offense um, in this drill, uh, then you add a live defender uh, to bump the cutter and really uh, force. Uh, the cutters to uh, fight through contact. 
Uh, this next drill that we do is our uh, one on uh fill cuts. Uh, this teaches players how to fill um, in the form of an interchange or a fill behind on the uh, logo, logo cut. Um, in, this, uh, in this case, we have our uh, the first first phase of the drill is we have our uh, four uh, perimeter players uh, positioned in the uh, at the uh, wing spot, and we have a coach um, in the uh, opposite slot. Uh, we want one to cut hard to the slot. We want coach to make a strong chest pass to one, and then we want one to uh, off the catch to rip through and drive downhill, looking to score. Um, and when and when they drive downhill, we want them to finish um, in the lane with a jump stop. Um, I believe in the jump stop. You don't have to use that. Um, this is a the motion offense drills are a tremendous opportunity uh, to start implementing skill development and teach your players the uh, fundamental plays that you're going to need them to be able to make to execute this offense. Uh, the second part of this uh, phase in the drill is we have. Uh, uh, one again making the fill cut only this time when they rip through they drive baseline um, and we want them to finish once again with a jump stop anytime you're driving downhill we want them to finish with a jump stop the third um, option that uh, we use out of the uh, fill cut is the back door uh, in this case one uh, is simulating an aggressive uh, denial uh, from the defense from the defense in this case one fill cuts to the slot and we're going to say that uh, one's defender really shoots the gap and uh, takes away the slot-to-slot -slot pass. Uh, we don't want one to fight the coverage. We want uh, he or she to uh, cut hard to the rim. Just like with our basket cuts, uh, we want he or she to lead off with their near side foot. In this case, it's the left foot. And we want coach to make a strong bounce pass to one. Uh, um, you can use the jump stop in this case or it. Um, when I when I uh, am simulating a back door in a in a motion drill, um, I always want my players to finish not just with a with a uh, either a power dribble in the lane, or we want them to finish uh, with a pump fake off the jump stop, uh, because um, in a in a real in a live situation, uh, one's defender will be chasing one off the back door cut and it's going to be late. So if you use the pump fake, it's a great opportunity to get to the free throw line. Uh, once your players uh, master the uh, basic uh, techniques and footwork of the drill, you can add a live defender. Uh, make sure that uh, when you add a live defender, that defender is simulating uh, in-game situations. So you don't want to simulate the back door if the uh, uh, defender is not denying. We don't want to simulate the middle drive um, if they're forcing a baseline. We don't want to simulate the baseline drive if, you're force if the defense is forcing a middle. Um, it's all read and react. Uh, phase two of this drill is uh, fill cut to the slot. This time we have the coach um, at the wing, and we have the uh, uh, cutters at the weak side, uh, weak side slot. Fill cut, uh, same same three basic options. Uh, we want one uh, to uh, 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 catch, rip through, drive middle, finish with a jump stop. Uh, same thing, rip through, drive baseline, finish with a jump stop. Uh, once again, we want to simulate the back door, back door cut. Uh, we want to make, uh, I want to emphasize that when, when a player makes a back door cut, you hit them with the bounce pass instead of the chest pass. So uh, to prevent a potential traveling call um, off the catch. Um, again, in a back door play, it's a great opportunity to simulate pump fakes and a chip to get to the free throw line. You can have a second coach um, under the basket um, uh, with a blocking pad acting as contact for the uh, finisher. Um, if your team is having trouble finishing through contact, I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to, you know, have a coach or a manager there with a blocking pad or um, something something along those lines to kind of create contact and simulate uh, finishing through. Uh, just like with phase one, once the players master the uh, basic uh, skills and techniques of the of the drill, then you add live defense uh, to simulate um, in-game situations. Uh, once your team masters the uh, fill cut, um, then you can add um, a second offensive player um, to uh, teach the interchange. Um, in this drill, we want to emphasize uh, sprinting from one spot to the other uh, to really keep the defense on their heels. 
Um, this drill acts uh, exactly the same way as the fill cut, um, only you have a second offensive player um, off the uh, off of the uh, fill cut and the interchange to uh, rips through and drives drives middle, finishes with the jump stop. Uh, second phase, drive baseline, finish with the jump stop. Third phase, um, uh, make a backdoor cut, finish with a pump fake. Um, and just like with any of our motion offense drills, once your players master the uh, basic uh, footwork and concepts of the offense, then you add live defense to see if they can finish through contact. Uh, then uh, once you get done with your two-man drills, then we introduce our three-man drills. Uh, the first, uh, the really the only three-man drill that we do uh, with a four-out one in motion is uh, three on uh, three, three on o, oh, three on three with the post. Uh, we have two players on the weak um, on the uh, weak side, um, uh, slot and wing, and we have a coach um, in the on the uh, opposite slot, and we have a postman inside. Um, this drill is designed to teach uh, the uh, perimeter players and the post players to work together. Um, and communicate within the offense. Um, in, in this case, we're going to start out with a slot-to-slot -slot pass, execute an interchange. Uh, five man is sealing his or her defender, looking for the high-low. Um, and then we start with a slot-to-wing pass, uh, two V-cuts to get open. Uh, we're going to say that five has a sweet catch. Um, two passes the ball to five, five goes to work. Um, this is an this is an opportunity to teach all to teach the low post entry rule, uh, which is where um, anytime the ball goes into the post, we have a split cut. Um, this is a great opportunity to teach players how to read uh, read split cuts, um, teaching uh, slip, teaching the slip cut, straight cut, um, you know, basically how to how to use utilize the split cut against a variety of defensive coverages. Uh, this is an also a really good opportunity to teach the uh, blind pig action out of the triangle, or um, out of our offense. Um, so we're gonna say, we're gonna say that uh, two is being overplayed. Five can flash to the flash to the elbow, um, and you execute that blind pig action out of our offense. Um, just like with any uh, any of our drills, um, once your players master the basic footwork and concepts of the offense, add live defense. Uh, once you get through with the uh, three-man uh, motion drills, uh, then you uh, can do our four-man drills. Um, pr uh, probably the most important four-man drill that you do um, in practice is going to be what I call four-on-four four four, no dribble, or four-on-oh uh, four, uh, four no dribble. Uh, uh, Co Hall of Fame coach Bob Knight um, always uh, uh, wanted to uh, take time in practice to eliminate the dribble and have players focus more on cutting and screening and just focus more on executing the offense rather than trying to score and trying to be fancy. Um, uh, the first part of the drill, I mean, you, you're basically just simulating uh, per, uh, the perimeter uh, aspect of motion. Um, so you start out with a slot to slot, interchange, slot to wing, uh, logo cut away, reverse the ball, interchange, slot to wing, Logo cut, um, and again, um, you um, once your players master the basic co uh, concepts of motion, um, add life defense to see if they can finish through contact. Um, uh, by the end of the season, you really want all of your motion drills to be live. You don't want uh, you don't want to spend the entire season practicing the technique. Uh, you want your players competing with one another by the end of the season and just reading and reacting. Uh, and taking what the defense gives them. Um, if if you are still working on your on your uh, footwork and techniques, you know going into sectionals, then you've got a problem. Well, there you have it, sports fans. The Villanova four out one in motion is one of the best offenses in college basketball. If you have a team that can really shoot the lights out, I encourage you to uh, use this offense to the best of your ability. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, uh, please leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, your support is always welcome.
Um, please tune in to the uh, Pacer Station podcast and please follow uh, me on uh, social media at uh, Coach J Pacer Station on Twitter. Um, um, if you like this video, please look me up on LinkedIn at Jared Earl. Um, this is Coach J saying so long.